Okay, this video is 2D, and we're going to be looking at how to write an equation of a line given information. Now, here's the key things. You need basically two bits of information at least, and the two bits can be several different things. But in the end, you need to find the slope of the line, so that tells you that the rate of change, and you need to find some points. Okay, and a lot of times this point could be the B, like the y-intercept, which is a lot of times easy, or just a point on the line. So basically it's like, where do I start from, and what direction do I go? So those are the two things. So for any equation, find out, uh, the slope, M, and then some point on the line. And we have two different equations that work. But again, we talked about equations are all the same information, just how we organize it and manipulate it so that it's useful for us okay so that's the objectives of what we have here today all right so here are the different equations now we are very familiar with y equals mx plus b okay notice we're given the slope and we find the y-intercept now we also have point slope form and you know and we use this if we're given the slope or if we have to find a slope of two points and then we're given a point that's perhaps not the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept is because, you know, then the, you know, this x would go to zero. So that what makes this nice. Okay. So, um, so what we want to look at is, okay, if I'm given a random point on the line and a slope, here is a formula that we can use that works. So we have y minus this point equals m times x minus this point. So this is the equation you want to memorize. Now we're also going to show you, you know, these two equations are the same. If we distribute this m and move the, and and simplify this and move this over, we would get that, and we'll show that here um, as we move forward. All right, so very simple, you know, if I give you slope-intercept form, I give you the slope, I give you the b, can we solve it? Boom, no problem. Plug in two for m, negative two, and negative six for b, and there's our equation. Starting point negative six, slope of negative two, no problem. Now, over here, notice we have a slope and we have a point. Now, a lot of times people would, you know, plug this information into y equals mx with b. So let me show what that could look like if we take this point and plug it in there. And this is what a lot of times people are used to. So let me kind of write this out. I'm just going to write it down in this part here. So if we have y equals mx plus b, again, I'm doing this equation over here. I'm going to plug in the y value of 2. I'm going to plug in the slope of negative 4. I'm going to plug in x value of 3 and plug in a b. Okay. Now notice we're solving for one variable. 2 is equal to um, negative 12 plus b. Move the 12 over and we get uh, you know 14 is equal to b. And we could say y is equal to negative 4x and I'll plus 14. Hopefully I did that right. So that's y equals mx plus b. Now notice that's the same as what we get over here. Now, you know, we should know how to do that, and that's what we've been taught. Now I'm just showing you a different way to do it. So it's point slope form. Here's the slope, here's the point. So you plug in the x value, goes in there, put the y value goes in there, and then boom, that's it. So if I say write a formula, you're done. It's like one step. Now, if I do say, okay, let's convert it so we can graph it. How do you do that? Well, very simply, distribute the negative 4, all right, so there it is right there, move the 2 over, and boom, done, okay? So it's a very simple and clean way to do that, okay? So we have slope interval form, solving for B, point slope form, a couple different elements here. All right, so now look at this scenario. Here we give you two points, so notice you still have to find a slope. Again, you always have to find slope and some sort of starting point. So slope here is, you know, you just do rise over run. We get a slope of 1. So point slope is. Now you can pick either point. It doesn't matter because both points are solutions. You could very easily do um, this over here. In fact, I'm going to show that right next to it. We could see it here. I plug in 2 for y, negative 2 for x, and simplify. I'm going to plug in the other point, and we'll show that right over here. So we have, um, you know, y minus 7 is equal to a slope of 1 and x minus 3. And if we distribute, we have x minus 3, simple distribution there, and move the 7 over, and x plus 4, and we get the same thing. Okay, notice in this slide, we're using information, you know, vocabulary, parallel and perpendicular. So we know that parallel means same slope, perpendicular means 
um, negative reciprocal sl slope. So, you know, you just got to read information. All right, so it's got to go, you know, through this point and it has to be parallel to this equation. So the only thing from this equation I care about is the slope. So that is my 2. And then you just plug that information in for y and x. And then boom, we're done. And again, it's okay to leave it like this. Again, we don't have to put it in graphing form unless we have to graph it. If I said just write me an equation with the proper information, point slope form is a simple way to do that. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now, we're, as far as writing equations, we are going to do a lot of word and application problems. But again, I want to give you the nuts and bolts on the different forms and equations we can use to find the slope and a starting point. That's the two two things. And again, we've seen a couple different formats, point slope form. Uh, we've seen standard form. Uh, we've seen slope intercept form. So use those in doing this. Again, I want you to try these here. Uh, right equation for these two scenarios right here.